all right guys and welcome back to the channel i'm agent r always ready and i'm just playing a little bit of some modern warfare 2 2022 now i know the game is not beloved but i have unfinished business with this game and so we're gonna hop in here and uh, i believe we're gonna go ahead and take care of a challenge with the sniper rifle i have to do some hip fire kills it's really annoying i'm also choosing to do it on uh shipment so that should be great anyway i had to do a little bit of uh cleanup shaders and all that kind of stuff for the new graphics card so we're gonna do a little bit of that for a second and then i'm gonna talk about something near and dear to me here in the city of charlotte let's get into it all right so let me get my bearings here uh, let's see. It's been a minute since I've used this setup, so matter of fact, let me just uh, switch out here and just use the uh, keyboard. Okay, there we go. See? All right. So we got Skate Man Two Five Seven. You're the first victim. All right. What are we? What are we doing here? Come on, dude. This is gonna be really stupid. Oh my gosh. And we still have the um, the blackout <laughs> instead of getting. That all white flashbang. Oh, there we go. Oh, come on, no. Yeah. <laughs> He's no. <laughs> all right. Uh, uh, let's see here. Slide. Nope. We're, we're going to get out of there really quick. We don't have time for that. No, what? No, no, no. Uh, I failed myself. He was far away, and then I was like, I got to scope him up. I shouldn't be able to get this dude. Come on, man. It's a dude to my left, too. Where do you go? So people would just di okay. I, I hit my. See, this is why nobody loves the game, man. Yeah, I'm getting a hit marker for using hip fire point blank with a sniper rifle in the back of the dome, and they just keep laying down. All right, there we go. Yeah, this this challenge sucks. Okay, let's come up. I, I was like, I know smiles on this corner. Shoot. Let's keep going here. Let me get it. There we go. No. This. There's another guy. Oh, I hit. Dude, I, I, I just. I can't with all the hit markers, man. Like, you gotta let me. You gotta let me take people out, man. Okay. I'm, I'm hit. Hit fire, hit fire. Oh, I'm, I'm dead. <laughs> Uh, this is slow going, man. Like, here we are in 2024. See? Now, how? This is what I mean. The inconsistency. So, I hip fire the guy from a distance, and it works. I hip fire from, like, three feet, maybe, and they're laying down, and I get a hit marker. Wow. That is um, not okay. All right. They're coming from the right. No flashbang. All right. This is, uh, is going to be tough. Anyway. What I so what I really want to just hop on here for is something I need to get off my chest for a while, and it is the city of Charlotte. So I have a little backstory. My wife and I moved here uh, ten years ago from uh, the DMV area, and we came up here because. It was time to get married and we want to be closer to family to make it easier on everyone else for the occasion. And my, uh, as a side note, as a side note, my wife is from Charlotte. Like she's actually an OG Charlottean. Well, that sounds funny to say. That sounds hilarious to say. Um, so when we got here, back in uh what was it 2015 a lot of the new buildings were going up because we were like let's let's get here let's hop into an apartment let's hit the ground running that sort of thing and right like she always was saying like they they always had like a, a homelessness a situation going on in charlotte right you had like tent city uh that kind of thing going on and at that point, it was already like generational. No, 
you know, there's a lot that goes into that with the people, personalities, local politics, all the stuff combined, right? Like there's a, a large history of just things not great here in the city of Charlotte. But it is a charming city and lovely uh, when things are going in your favor, okay? So we ran into, I remember this because my mom was visiting one time and it was the first time that it was like late at night and we just saw um, someone homeless near uh, the apartment complex, right? It's new, uh, everything's in transition, right? Gentrification is taking place, you name it, right? It's all over the city. Uh, places that had been uh, labeled uh, to be able to have, you know, all kinds of areas like industry and stuff alongside houses. Essentially, they weren't uh, they weren't slated for single-family residences uh, like a lot of the neighborhoods were that particularly were non-black. Okay, right, like the white neighborhoods, single-family residences, the black ones they had you know chemical plants beside the houses that's just how it is that's how it was uh throughout many places uh in the united states especially in the south so you know i'm from a small town in anderson and when mom saw that i had to explain hey like it's just kind of normal around here and over the years it's kind of been like tough going because you end up without realizing it build up uh, a level of um yeah, I, I, I had to uh, type that in. <laughs> you build up uh, a tolerance to what you see. It kind of changes you in a way that, I mean, for the most part, at least, I don't really much enjoy. So, fast forward and the, fast forward and the pandemic has taken place, you know what I'm saying? And I decide, hey, I need to get out more and undo becoming a hermit and like honestly like the easiest thing to just get going was hopping out and doing DoorDash. Like right, I'm going to force myself to you know what the come on man gonna force myself to interact with people serve people just get back into the swing of things right because it's just being me and my wife for the past couple of years uh pretty much locked away inside not being able to interact with people and i was like i gotta you know i gotta get the juices flowing again and, and, and get some of this humanity back right so and i'm doing doordash and it's been a journey but for the most part yeah it's been wonderful right like i i really can't complain uh, about just how much it's helped me to get back to focusing on other people and my delivery uh, of speech and all that other kind of stuff and, and like excellence and whatnot. <sighs> you stole my kill. So I really want to bring this up is because I, I've gotten to see a lot when it comes to the, the various sides of Charlotte, different aspects, different times of day, um, all that kind of stuff. And uh, we gotta stay back here, man. Let's see if I can get a spot. <laughs> Come on, they spawned on my back. Uh, but uh, really, what I did notice though is for all of the. <clears throat> promotion of the city. And everybody's saying how much of a great place it is and opportunity and all that kind of stuff. You know what I mean? Like, they're advertising Charlotte outside of Charlotte. Of course, real estate agents is part of the job. I used to sell real estate, right? I had my licensure and everything like that. So I understand, like, it's mean, tied directly to your wallet, right, to promote the place. However, there is a very gross and growing underlying issue with the city of Charlotte. And it isn't just particularly, I guess, only tied to homelessness. It's a poverty issue. Okay. You are not going to get that execution. Get out of here. Anyway, there is a poverty issue. And what I mean by that is that like poverty itself manifests physically, but it's always first and foremost, a spiritual issue. Like it's a mindset thing, right? 
again, all kind of factors go into the optics on how that even starts. Dude, that's there are way too many shots, bro. Thank you. The issue is all over the city, okay? No matter what time of day, no matter what side of town, and I genuinely mean no matter what side of town you're on, you are going to find not only uh, homelessness, you're going to find people that cost you, they're gonna ask you for money, they're gonna say that they're not on drugs, if you can spare them uh, some, some money, uh, et cetera, et cetera. You're gonna have people that come up to you while you're trying to use a public bathroom. They're always hanging out in front of doors at gas stations. They're gonna be hanging out in front of grocery stores. They're going to be hanging out in front of restaurants. I mean, it doesn't really matter. One of the days I was doing a delivery and I was going to somebody's apartment complex. It's fairly brand new in the Noda area. And I'm thinking as I'm going back to the car that, you know, there's this person in the garage, you know, of course you think, oh, they stay there doing something else. Like the person is kind of, is dimly lit and they come up and ask me if I have some money to spare. And so I'm like, damn, like they're even, like the, the people that are willing to do this are even inside of garages to apartment complexes. And the crazy thing is, Despite like all of that activity, the city is growing at such a rapid pace that it can't really deal with like how widespread the issue is. And on top of that, they want it this way, okay? Especially because during uh, the situation two years ago, there was a lot of money that was going out to different metropolises. And part of that was tied to like, hey, are you um, a mother? Are you a single mother? Are you divorced or are you married but separated? Like the, the optics that they know will get them grant money from the government, they will go and they will use it. They will use a little bit of it. And then you're trying to figure out where the rest of this money is, is at, right? Like it's people being bussed in from various places, you know, like Greyhound, and it's just the wildest thing because it's just like an influx. It's an influx of people who are here. It's an influx of people who, you know, there's a language barrier, there's a culture barrier. And, and it, you know, it, it's just, it's very tiring, man. Like you're trying to get out here and move and focus on the work itself and every step of the way, like there's just, there is such a, relative lack of peace in the city and those who are charged with taking care of the city aren't doing anything about it right like when you have people who have been on the same island of the city right like those islands in the middle of the road and they main it every day i mean it's it's crazy the level of dedication and consistency that this really does have right like that level of consistency is like getting up to do a full-time job and the crazy thing is like they know they can get away with it on top of that you have the people <laughs> in the busted ultimates you have folks with the fake tags like it's just so runaway uh, just the other day man like somebody smashed into a car my wife was telling me right like downstairs Somebody smashed into a car. There was an argument. The guy's like, hey, come on, don't do it. And then all you hear is screeching tires and the person dips off because the city is full of drunk people because there are breweries on every corner. And then you get people that hit cars, all the parallel parking, and they just run away, man. Ugh. But I say that, man, because you what you're trying to do and like how you want to try to build like it, it really isn't conducive for like family building or thinking about like the future in that way and I know that it's easy because like we are blessed we're fortunate for what we have that was a great shot and 
you think about all that goes into building, how am I supposed to do this in a way where it feels, I don't know, at least decent or good or pour your, your time and effort into a city that they really want that smoke. They're not really trying to fix the issue, right? Like there's only so much that nonprofit and et cetera, I mean, can really do, let's be honest. So, I mean, do you guys, wherever you are, let me know like where you are in, in, in a metropolis and like, how is it where you're at? Because Charlotte loves to talk a good game and people love coming here and talking about how great it is. But once you actually stop and remove yourself from your bubble for like five seconds and think about what's actually going on, it's pretty toxic. And there doesn't seem to be any end in sight. I mean, rents are crazy high, just like they are uh, everywhere else. Um, you've got, you know, drug abuse all over the city. You've got places that say, hey, you know, no smoking is allowed. And then you've got somebody, I mean, you can smell weed the moment that you're walking a dog uh, downstairs. You know what I mean? Like, it, it's just, it's so runaway. It's so tiring, man. And you're trying to you're trying to make the best of a city that really has a lot to offer but it always comes down to leadership and if leadership talks a big game and doesn't really do anything and it's just business as usual it's not it's not fun like and i'm already thinking or considering like where to next it's been a decade uh, almost a decade it's been real but yeah thinking about raising a family and and getting the most out of a city while at the same time giving my effort and creativity in that city i don't know that's where i have to leave it that's just all i'm thinking uh right now uh anyway thank you for the listening and to the rant i'm gonna get out of here i just felt like just voicing this so that I can move on, man. Uh, I, I want Charlotte to be so much more than what it is. And there are a bunch of great people here and we're just surrounded by the incompetence of leadership that for, you know, getting grant money, they will really sell short the people who are trying to build up the city.